Welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. And today we're going to be doing another PowerPoint. I know I got a comment from someone before saying that they love the PowerPoint presentation. And shout outs to you, my boy. This video is for you. We are going to be covering the best powers in Path of Champions. This might be a little interesting to think about, but when you first start any run of Path of Champions, you end up with a few options. I think you get three and you get to choose what is your first starting power, right? And that takes us into the first one. Some powers do better with certain champions, obviously. For example, the power crush, which gives allies overwhelm, uh, work better for offensive decks. Like I know Pike is a really good one. Uh, Lee Sin deck is a really good one. Um, let me think about another one that might work. Um, I think you get the idea. Maybe the Zed deck also helps you out. Uh, the Lulu deck. So even if they block, they're going to be taking some damage. Uh, that works really well. But with other ones like Counterfeit Production, um, which creates a zero cost counterfeit copies, might not work the best for that one. That one is for a little bit of longer games or for things that have to require that that require using values. For example, Echo and being able to um create a lot of chrono breaks for himself or even things like um like, like even zed right zed decks kind of need that um that gas coming in you, you you need a lot of uh cards especially if it's offensive you want to make sure that you have your good cards and coming in really quickly uh that might work a little bit better for those counterfeit decks the ones that you kind of need a little bit longer to be able to draw your stuff uh the cool thing about this is or at least the way i thought about it is well some things might not work for others but does that mean it's a bad ability no so instead i decided to break them up in terms of how viable they are with other decks as well as making sure that we have uh, a good balance of everything so what do i mean by that let's go to the next one that means that bad skills the way that i think about bad skills is that they offer no help and should be skipped and it's not that they don't offer any help, it's just that they might be a little too underpowered that they're not really doing what they're supposed to, or they don't really match the play style of a lot of decks, right? For example, we got some common stuff like flexible game plan, which only lets you draw two. Honestly, there's better skills there that just drawing two will give you at the start of the game. Unless you have a lot of one or zero drops, maybe like a lurk, that might be good. But outside of that, I don't really think it's that helpful. Things like uh, that doesn't mean just the common abilities are going to be bad. There's actually gearing up, which is a bad thing. It uh, only summons two armor gear head. Some decks might not even be able to create cards until maybe like your sec your third or fourth game uh, until you get some new cards. So really gearing up is not going to be that good. Let's go into the next category. These are the meh skills. These are ones that offer little help. They might be useful for some niche decks, but overall they have better abilities. For example, when you draw a card, give other allies plus one plus zero. This is good for like maybe twist of fate, right? And this might be good to push extra damage with lurk. But outside of that, it's not really that good of a thing. It doesn't really work that well defensively. Um, but uh, mess skills are not just a common and maybe not even the rare ones. There's actually one. Uh, there's actually a few epic ones that are meh, kind of like advanced preparations, which is good, right? Because you were able to create an ancient preparations in hand. Uh, so you get one of them, you're able to predict. And then when in two turns, it gets destroyed. It summons two clock links because all ally completion effects activate twice. However, the bad thing about this is that it's really only useful in like the Malphite deck, really. Um, there's not that many other decks that have to do with landmarks. And so that's why it's kind of like a bad choice. Uh, so if you were to get that epic, I mean, you you pro you should probably skip it, right? There's another one like terraforming so many random landmarks. Same thing. You Some decks don't even have landmarks. And immortality, one that might feel like it's a pretty good one where it heals your nexus. Uh, sometimes it doesn't help that much because uh, unless you know you're going pretty quick, like maybe against Zed, this might be a good, uh, a good card. But honestly, a lot of the times that you're facing bosses, it's not that you can't 
uh, take damage is that they usually try to OTK you and so this one doesn't really make that much sense especially since it's the beginning of the match. It would be cool if it was maybe like start of round heal one right that might be a little bit better but let's go on. Then we have some good skills um, and you notice that I kept some common ones here because that doesn't mean all common ones will never be good. In fact, there might be one or two broken common abilities. Uh, these usually are really good. For example, when allies attack nab one, that's because a, uh, a lot of the enemy decks are usually a little bit more power than yours. Um, and B, you don't want to run out of steam against these decks. And so nabbing one is always pretty helpful. Uh, the other one that is I think is really good is that when an ally survives damage granted plus one plus one these abilities if you're good and you know how to play them right uh, they work with I would say over like 70% of decks and they usually lead to victory for example you can uh, keep pinging your Ari now your Ari is like a 7-7 because you're only you're dealing one to yourself and now it gets a plus one plus one right um, and then you're able to start attacking and then becomes elusive with quick attack. So I think it's a really good uh, card. Next one, uh, rare to frostbite. The strongest enemy good skills are usually rare skills here. Um, but there are also some epic skills. Not all epic skills are broken. I put one here. Allies have plus one, plus one for each keyword they have. This is good for like lurk decks. These are good for elusive decks like Lulu, stuff like that. Um, and so these often have you win so if you get any of these skills you end up kind of winning uh as long as you kind of get maybe another skill like towards the victor people if you get a good two good skills you're doing a really good job right however great skills amazing skills awesome skills are these broken abilities the reason i did not want to put an epic is i want to actually give more show into the common i believe enfeebling strike is one of the best common uh skills when you that when you damage an enemy reduces power by the damage dealt this works with quick attack units this works really good with pinging effects like with jinx the jaces right um let's say that you have a quick attack person like zed and they start buffing up their units to like seven hp with like four attack the zed hits them now they have two hp it reduces them by five let's say now they're at zero they can't strike you they can't block ephemeral units with these unless they want to get pinged um if you have things like a get excited um not only is it a minus three in health it's a minus three in attack uh, you can use things like uh withering whale which basically um decreases the attack of all of their units by one whenever you want to use it so i believe enfeebling strike is one of the more broken common abilities next thing are the rares things like having lurk if if you have a fast speed deck with this blue uh light and weight uh, ability really good it, it i feel like it doubles the speed at which you're able to develop and take over the board um Fixer Upper is one of my favorite ones. This one, every time it comes through, I always click it because especially in the beginning, you don't want to get outvalued right away. And this gives your weakest ally a plus three, plus three. It can make anything like a, even a prey, right? Which is a one cost zero one. It makes it a three, four, right? It just, it's just so good. And Trifarian Might, if you have seen my Vi uh, video where I um, am able to summon infinite uh, Viego's and Infinite Vi's, it just wins games. Trifarian Might is such a good card because you might say, well, it doesn't work with Lulu or it doesn't really work with um, Kennen, right? The cool thing is you can actually bump up your units. Let's say that you are looking for that Trifarian Might. You can buff up your units to have more than five. So when you summon it, boom, it just takes control. The other thing is maybe you don't have those five five plus attack units you can pick them up while you're playing maybe you get a garen on the on uh on the champions you summon him strikes immediately summon him again uh, i mean strike or attack with him and you just get an automatic level up right you can use a uh ephemerals right you know those sand soldiers i forget what they're called um you just summon a ephemeral copy of it and it just strikes the weakest enemy and it probably kills it right that's what makes it so good. It activates reputation. 
It could be played offensively and defensively. So I think it's just a really good skill. For everyone who's saying, where's this skill? Where's this skill? Where's this one? Don't worry, I made a full list right here. So we're going to go through that really quickly. Starting with the bad powers, right? You can see here it says bad. Um, these are all the bad card, all the bad things that you should probably skip. Summoning so sparring student only works with like two or three champions. Uh, bouncing blades create a fleeting edge. It only pings one. It's really not that good. It's good maybe later on or if there's no other option, but not really. Fleeting copies of counterfeit copies. It's to help me out with one run ever. Uh, clock setter create four time time bombs in your deck. No. Uh, flexible game plan draw two. It's not the worst one, but there's better ones. Uh, empty mind when your hand is empty, draw one. Uh, doesn't let you run out of steam, but in the early game, uh, in the first few matches, you easily deck out. Uh, Wild Inspiration, your creative cards cost one less. Works really well, uh, but sometimes it's actually a detriment to you. Uh, you might think, how? Uh, and I played a Jace where I got this, and my six my uh, six cost cards were never being able to, to be duplicated. So that sucked. Uh, gearing up, summon two armor gearheads. They get pinged so easily and increase your max health by 10, you get OTK'd, you get like 30 damage. And if you were able to survive that 30 damage hit, it's 30 damage next turn. So it's not that good. Okay, the the meh cards, right? Uh, allies have overwhelm, works with some decks, not really the majority. Draw your cards, uh, cards you draw cost one less. This round, the quick draw, it's actually uh, pretty decent, um, but sometimes you just, for the most part in the beginning you still can't even play your good cards right it's not like you draw the six like a six cost card and you're like okay i can play it it's more like uh it's turn three you draw the six card and you're like well i still can't play it right uh seed of power summon an emperor's days it's pretty good but i feel like it's not good as your first starting one unless you're playing like a really fast deck uh not really that good Battlefield training, give your weakest ally plus one plus one. It's pretty good. Um, however, one of the bad things is that a lot of your weaker units that you place in the very beginning are kind of weak anyway, that they get pinged or you still have to trade them. So all that leveling up kind of didn't work out. Uh, Dragon's Rage, summoned allies are Furies and Dragons. I would say this is good, but the reason why I put it in meh is because the one that when I survive damage deal one plus one plus one is a better version of this. Uh, when you uh, higher education, when you draw a card, give allies plus one and plus zero. It's good for draw decks, but that's pretty much it. Uh, when you summon an ally, give it plus one plus one this round. I think it's a really good one if you're going for super aggressive, but the consistency in the deck by the end of the by the end of the game becomes kind of iffy. So you hardly are able to use this ability. So it's good in the beginning and then it kind of dies down at the end. Uh, when you summon an ally, give it challenger this round. Uh, this one's okay. It kind of it kind of uh, feels like the uh, the temple. I feel like if we had this one and this one as like a rare, it, it's basically like the temple without having to actually place that uh, landmark down. And so I think it would be a little better. Uh, grow my power to match my health. Basically, it's a formidable, uh, formidable maker for everything. And the Path of Champion champions are not that good for this. There's way better things to get. Uh, allies have plus one plus zero. It's basically the same thing here. In fact, this one's probably even better. When you draw a card, give allies plus one plus zero because this one uh, is basically the same thing. You're always drawing a card. Reset, create three Chrono Bricks in your deck. Pretty good, um, but there's not a lot of decks that really utilize it. There's maybe two or three that are pretty good with it. Uh, this is why summon two Vanguard Lookouts are um, it's just a better version of this one. Summon two armored gearheads, and so I don't really like it that much. Um, but it's it is a little better than the other one. Um, officer backup, summoning sting officer. I've used this a couple times, and it actually works out pretty well because it's a one unit elusive. Uh, however, towards the later ones, I think it's after Zed. It's really hard for him to do anything past the first turn or past two turns. Uh, so he just becomes a chump blocker, which is a free two drop. But um, yeah, it, it kind of loses its its steam after like 
even Ezreal, because as soon as we play with Ezreal, they just kill it. So it doesn't really matter. Immortality, heal, heal your Nexus uh, 10. This one's a little bit better. It doesn't just increase your uh, thing. This one actually heals your Nexus 10, which is good. But again, you get OTK'd, which isn't really that good. Uh, Summon random landmark. Like I said before, it works for only a few of them. Same thing with advanced preparations. Alternate power source, summon a Hextech Observatory. I think this is a pretty good one, but there's only a few decks that really use a lot of spells that on your first spell, you, you regain your mana. So this was a little bit tougher to play. Rock Bear then, summon a Hibernated Rock Bear. And when an ally landmark counts down to zero, uh, you get a Hibernating Rock Bear landmark in your hand. It's good, but then it starts clogging up your hand in later stuff. And then you still have to wait a while for it to actually work. So it, I wouldn't really say it's that good. Out of the gate, so many random two cost unit from your deck. Honestly, sometimes decks don't even have that, that good two cost cards. So I don't really like it. Uh, let's see. All right, the good ones. There are actually four common good ones. Fast deal, draw one and give it fleeting. It, it makes things a lot more consistent in decks because you're actually basically drawing two and if you don't want to use it it goes away if you have a fleeting card uh let's just say you get a fleeting um uh oh, what's it called the echo spell card that lets you predict and then draw one if you get it and you can't use it it goes into your deck you're able to pick it up later on um when alice attack nab one i already said that one and when they survive damage granted plus one that's a little bit better when you damage the enemy nexus, grant the top ally in your deck plus one plus one. This can come from impact. This can come from a double attack. This can come from elusives, uh, mystic shots or anything pinged to the nexus. It actually works really well. Um, and it gets maybe like your next card a plus two or, or uh, I know that I've had things like impact on like two or three units. I attack and they get blocked, but my next unit comes in with a plus three plus three. So it's a, re it's a really good uh, ability for common. Uh, Frostbite, the strongest enemy, is pretty good. Give the enemy weak. Uh, give us, give the weakest enemy vulnerable, and this one as well. Hold it, stun the strongest enemy. They are all on the category of they're able to slow down the opponent's tempo, so that way you, a less powerful deck at the beginning, is able to keep up. I have you I have gotten one of these every time there's like a victor because even though they summon him um, and you're able to survive the first massive attack next one it gets frostbitten you're able to deal damage to it maybe even kill it uh, if it's vulnerable you can use it with a quick attack to try and get rid of it so I think it's a real these are really good for like uh, making sure you're, you're keeping up with the tempo domination start uh, a round start rally and sorcery refill your spell mana is so good they work really well with like 60 percent of the decks for more aggressive ones this one is insane like putting a zed they have to block next turn zed have to block next turn summon another card zed attacks it's really really good um when you cast a slow spell cast it again on the same targets this is a really good one i was looking to put it on broken but there's some decks that don't really work that well with it. But what I like about this is that most slow spells are usually the better spells in general. So copying slow spells is really, really good. Um, when you summon an ally granted a random keyword, this is the victor effect. It has so much variance that it's good, but uh, the bad variance makes this not broken. Sometimes you get this and you get fearsome, or sometimes you get this and you get a tough, but you don't really need tough, right? This, this welcome gives us is pretty good, um, but there's a better one out there. Spell Singler, your spell costs one less. It, I mean, that's just a generally good card, a uh, good ability. This is this one's really good. Ally buffs are permanent. So if you use a Pale Cascade, you get a permanent plus one plus one. If you say, hey, grant a quick attack this round, you get the uh, the buff permanently. This works really well with the faster paced decks. Um, I think it's really good. Evolution, allies have plus one for each keyword. Again, works really well with some decks. There's only a few of them that don't really work well with this one, but having allies get a plus one plus one makes it so good. I know there's that Prowling Menace, something like that. It's a Bilgewater, one cost, one one elusive with Fearsome. 
it makes it a 3-3, right? Um, and what I like about evolution is instead of getting new cards, you can start going the, the item route and getting keywords for random cards that you have in your deck and they just immediately get a plus one plus one. Right. So let's say that uh, I, I've done this before and I think there's some on my path of champions is I get like Ari. I get I give Ari. She has quick attack and then later on she has elusive. I give her regeneration. Maybe she has a tough and then she gets an overwhelm. That's a plus five plus five as soon as I drop the two cost. Right. Really good. Elusives just get an automatic plus one plus one. Uh, mana flow get an empty mana gem. Uh, especially for decks that are a little bit slower like Lee Sin, this one her helps out a lot. Uh, and generally, most decks just help, uh, just work with an extra mana gem. Uh, reduce the cost of your most expensive card in hand by one. This could be actually one of the meh ones, but I put it up just because you can start getting bigger uh, cards. Like you can pick up an Aurelian Soul and uh, you know turn 5 or 6, you're, you can start dropping them down. Um, so many random one cost Poro, really good for blocking. There is a better one than this one, but this one gives you a lot of cool abilities. For example, you can get, uh, you can start building a Poro deck just by having this. Uh, you can even start using them to chump block. And there has been times where they have an elusive on the field and I have no idea how my deck can handle an elusive. Boom, a, an elusive Poro comes out and saves the day. Uh, when you cast a spell, deal one to the enemy nexus. It's good for certain decks. Not that many uh, use it, but every deck uses spells. So it helps out with that reason. Uh, when you summon a one cost unit, grant it plus two, plus two. This, if you get this and the Poros, you basically get a three, three every single turn. And it just helps so much. I think Yip's genius is pretty good. However, there's hardly ever one cost units. The good thing is... Uh, you usually get those in the store and two it's not just when uh one of your one cost units it's every one cost unit so as long as you have one in your deck it doesn't hurt to just get it uh explosive entrance when you summon an enemy deal one to the enemy nexus you you guys will uh oh actually you guys probably will see it already i got this in my pike versus victor run and you're able to see that once you spam ephemerals it's like five damage immediately right share the bounty when you target an ally with a single target spell copy it to the weakest enemy oh let me tell you every time i get this i just pray i get a felios uh because the moon weapons counts as two each move weapon gives you two and you're able to like let's say we get overwhelm on two units or we get lifesteal on two units it just is so good uh things like healing is really good with faded units things like uh, giving quick attack to units are really good this is just an amazing overall card and finally here we go the only common great ability is enfeebling strike Lion Weight that turns everything into Lurkers is really good. Grow My Health to match my power is an amazing card because as soon as you're just buffing them, you can give them a, an Elixir of Wrath, which gives your uh, three attack to a unit or gives it three additional attack. It will also transfer it to its health and now you can use them as chump blockers, boost up their effects again, their attacks, attack, and it just regrows their uh, health back. Uh, uh, give your weakest ally plus three plus three this round. We already talked about why that one's good. Trifarian Might, we have talked about why that one's good. When you summon a champion, summon an exact ephemeral copy of it. You guys have seen how that works with Kennen, how it works with Timo, Vi, Viego. Overall, just insanely good card. I think I was playing a Nami deck um, recently. I used this. It created two Namis, and what they did was they're going to kill my uh, main Nami. Oh, I know what I had. I had Lee Sin Nami. And I used Lee Sin's thing to give everyone a challenger, right? And then both of the Namis leveled up. Uh, Nami's effect was, uh, it, it gave me, or Lee Sin's effect gave me one extra mana gem. I used that to uh, level up. And then I used the plus two plus two. Both Namis increased themselves uh, by a plus one in the health. 
they were able to survive and then i started spamming some other spells that weren't burst speed and it before my second nami died of just being ephemeral um it boosted up my units to like all of them being like six six or something so it's just an amazing card uh let's see or uh, just an amazing ability create a fleeting feral presence in hand you might think this one isn't really that good but you're basically always using it to see what card you want to draw so instead of it so this one is like a light version of saying you choose what card you want to draw right it gives you an option of three but maybe you're trying to fish for your lux right you use it on turn one you don't find it use it in turn two you don't find it use it in turn three you don't find it use it in turn four you got them turn five you summon the lux it's just a good card and let's say that maybe you don't need lux right now because it's turn one and you get it you can predict uh, a two cost unit or a two cost spell and then you use the next turn it's just a really good card uh, when you gain the attack token summon a sapling really good with scouting decks uh really good with domination really good with anything else like that it's just a really good thing the good thing about it is a 2-1 and it's ephemeral so if they try to use spells to kill it hey man it's it was gonna die anyway you know this one is i believe the biggest variance of them all but it's so good when you summon an ally ally grant its keywords to allies amazing thing because uh even if you have one unit for example let me say that i have a random uh zed that i've been powering up right it has zed with elusive it has quick attack and let me put that as it that it had overwhelm um you start spamming your cards maybe you have four one cost units and then you summon zed it's basically that zoe leveled up nexus ability boom everything has elusive overwhelm quick attack and if you pair it with another epic one which gives you a plus one plus one for every keyword it's basically you summon it everything has those keywords and get an automatic plus three plus three zed now has a plus three plus three and when you attack with its um with its living shadow it just recasts it again it's such a good this is probably one of the most broken abilities uh these are only here because these are all the really good abilities that the um, Vagar Path of Champions gave you. So I'm not too, I don't want to talk about these. Um, but yeah, these are all the abilities. Um, I know it was quite a while, but thank you again for watching. Let me put it on this one, right? Thank you so much for watching. If you really enjoy my videos, feel free to uh, subscribe for more. I am trying to reach before I have to go back into master school. I'm just trying to get those 50 subscribers. So thank you so much. I appreciate this support that you guys have kept, kept giving me. It's so amazing that I can slowly start seeing my channel grow little by little by little. So I appreciate it so much. Thank you. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.